You've heard me um, say before, comment on um, Jesus' response to questions put to him. Um, how many times Jesus doesn't really answer the question put to him. Either he just ignores it, doesn't answer it, or he starts talking about uh, something uh, not what they asked. You know, for instance, the question in Luke, how, how, is it true that not everyone will be saved? And Jesus says, um, try to enter by the narrow gate. You know, so he doesn't really answer their question. And you've heard me, uh, my sense of those situations is that they're asking the wrong question. That I don't need to know how many people will be saved. I need to know how I can be saved, you know. And so I find it significant this morning that um, Jesus actually does answer the question uh, directly. You know, what is the greatest commandment? And it doesn't matter the motive, Jesus answers that question. And then he adds a little tag, and, and we know this answer quite well. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And we can look at those and say, okay, I have, these are two things I have to do, and they're the most important things I have to do. And it's okay that I, I've meditated on those myself. But I'd like to take a slightly different tack this morning and in one sense be more general and in another sense be even more specific. So the general thing that I'm taking from them, if love is the first word in these commandments, you know, if these, then love must be in all of my life. In other words, Loving God and loving neighbor. And we know from Jesus, from other places in Scripture, that neighbor pretty much includes everybody, you know. And even we're supposed to love our enemies. So, the, what Jesus is telling us, we need to love always. Everyone, everywhere, in everything we do. And in the first reading, we have specific examples. If you lend money, don't be like an extortioner demanding more back. And if you take a cloak as a pledge, give it back to the person before nightfall because that's what they had to sleep in. Obviously, these are not, uh, they don't fit in our culture, right? But the point is to love even in your interactions with people, even in um, business, you know. And we think about how do, do I love everywhere? You know, in my business, do I love my clients or my customers? And I don't mean, don't take it in a silly way, I don't mean that we hug our customers and Talk to them, you know, and find out. No, but are we doing our business in a loving manner? You know, those times that we hear this, and hopefully we don't say it, but those times, we, well, I'm sorry, it's just business, you know. That already should tweak us inside, that there's something wrong with that if we have to say, well, I'm sorry, it's just business, you know. Sorry you're hurt by that or something. But we must be uh, loving even in business, even in personal interactions, you know. And it's not easy to do, it's, it's work. I mean, we know that even if at times it's hard to love our spouse, it's going to be even harder to love people who don't like us or whom we don't like, or people who don't mean anything to us. And be careful, I don't mean that they don't mean anything. I mean, they don't mean anything to us. The person just passing us on the road or walking past us in the grocery store, you know. So I was in, in Kroger's and 
trying to figure out because I have a hard time, you know, there are like 4,000 brands of everything and I'm trying to figure out what it is I'm wanting to find, you know. And someone walks up and stands right in front of me and starts looking at, you know. And I'm happy to say that I didn't say what occurred to me to say. <laughs> but I'm not happy to report that it occurred to me to say it, you know. And I started working on myself in there, you know, blah, 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 all the things I was telling myself. And finally got to the point of, because she kept standing there, <laughs> finally got to the point of saying, can I help you? Because I have trouble too figuring out what, uh, you know. And, and we figured out what, we found what she wanted, and then later I found, you know. But, <laughs> I know, you know, it's silly, but, how does the gospel, does the gospel have anything to do with my buying something at Kroger's? Yeah, you know, it's like, how do I love this person? How do I be a loving person to her, you know? And we can go about our lives and do the things we have to do and still be loving, but we have to work at it a little bit. And I take from these commandments that we are supposed to love everyone, everywhere, at all times, which is a big order, right? But it doesn't matter whether I'm ministering to someone, whether someone is stopping me to talk, or whether I'm signing checks. You would think that would be a benign thing, but I can sign about 3,000 checks, you know, or at least it feels like it, and I find myself getting more and more aggravated, and, you know, and I say, Steph, how, sign this check with love, you know? Even larger things, like, um, the first reading mentions the alien. How do I treat, treat strangers? Do I sit there or walk past them or let them walk past me or sit in my pew and say, yeah, I've never seen that person before, and then go about my business? You know? Or do I open myself as an ambassador for St. Catherine Parish? And, Hi, I've never seen you before. Welcome. Or let's go further, how do we deal with immigration? What's a Christian supposed to think about immigration? And the point is to think about it like a Christian, not like a Republican or a Democrat, which is what we do often, you know. Our goal is not to be good Republicans or good Democrats. Our goal is not even to be good Americans. Our goal is to be good Christians. Let ourselves be transformed by the gospel. So how can we have an immigration system that treats people with love? And I don't mean a, sh a shallow thing. This culture translates love as being nice to people, you know. It's not necessarily loving, you know. And loving may mean we let everybody in, may mean we let nobody in, may mean we let people in in a certain way that, you know, but we treat them in a certain way, it's, it's complicated. But if we're going to love, we're going to have to work at it, right? Here's another little example. I, as you know, I, I wrote some prayers to pray while I'm vesting. So I put on my stole, which is the symbol of the power and authority of the priesthood. You know, and I pray, Good Shepherd, never let me forget that I but participate in your priesthood and must use its power and authority as you do, not for my own ends, but to shepherd, but to instruct, shepherd, and sanctify your people, you know. And there is authority and power in the priesthood, authority to teach. So sometimes I have to correct people, you know, but I have to do it in love. Sometimes I have to teach, like the last couple weeks, you know. 
I have to talk about abortion in a way that's loving to those who are still participating in it. You, know? you can't be pro-life and hate people who aren't. You're not pro-life and you're not Christian yet. You're not loving. And so, anyway, I pray that. And then I put on the chasuble. And as Paul writes, over all these things put on love. And so as I put on the chasuble, I say, Lord Jesus, help me to clothe the power and authority of my priesthood in love. So it doesn't mean that I don't use my power, don't use my authority, that I don't teach or I don't correct or I don't whatever. But it means I do my ministry in love, that I may serve your people with the same sacrificial charity we celebrate in the liturgy. So I can say a great mass, but if I don't love my people, what's the point? You know? And so how can I be a loving attorney or a loving computer programmer or a loving plumber, a loving teacher? How can I love these people that I'm serving? You know? But I want to go a step deeper. We prayed in the collect. I find this interesting. Make us love what you command. <laughs> but what he commands is to love. <laughs> so we're saying, make us love to love. So, the church has talked about virtue in this way. Virtue is a habit that brings joy or happiness. So one good act, being nice to someone once, you know, being whatever, one good act, telling the truth, is not virtue. It's just a good act. It becomes virtue when being honest is a habit that I just automatically tell the truth. And further, that I would prefer to tell the truth, that I get more pleasure out of telling the truth than telling a lie. And so, biting my tongue once in a grocery store and talking myself to myself until I am actually, I go, I mean, biting my tongue is a good thing, right? But there's more work to do. <laughs> and then bringing myself to be able to talk with her in a loving way, et cetera, et cetera, is, is a good step too, you know. But the goal for a Christian is to automatically, not even think about what I was thinking about saying, you know. That automatically I respond to her in love. And I enjoy doing it, you know. So it's a good thing not to flip someone off who's cut you off on the road or someone who's driving me, it's a good thing not to lean out and start screaming at him, you know. But that's not, we've got a lot more work to do than that. Somebody cuts it, why not just back off, let them in. What's, what's it hurt us, you know what I mean? The job is to work until that stuff is automatic for us. And that we get more pleasure out of that than we do out of screaming at them or driving up until we're four inches from their bumper just to make sure they know that they cut us off, you know. There's a certain pleasure in that, but ultimately, not really. None of us really feel good. But to do good, often enough that it becomes be habit, starts to feel good as well and becomes pleasurable. And so this, these commandments, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. If we really let that penetrate, what it tells us is to love at all times in our life, to let our lives be about love. Until we come to love loving, then we can inherit, as the collect goes on, then we can inherit the things that God promises. We can't do it on our own. We need the help of grace.
but it also needs work. So let us pray that we have the grace to make progress in this, but let's also work at it. Let us think about that any moment in the day can be an opportunity to love. Any moment of the day, any action we do, any situation we're in, can be opportunity to make love more of a habit in our lives until we come to prefer being loving than to be selfish or self-centered.